and here we go again. I've just been putting forward the uh, course of all these details of how to use Yagil and JSON. I seem to get quite a few queries about this from various people, and I've written a lot of blogs about it. And um, with 7.5, some of the web interface screens have changed for the um, IBM I web server setup. Um, or of course you can do it through green screen. So I thought it's about time I put this together as free chapters in the uh, web server uh, class I put together. So here it is. If you look for IBM I web services, look for IBM I and the internet class down in the IBM I web services uh, module. There's all kinds of things I'm putting together as this week goes by. One's gonna be talking about how to do the integrated web server um, for web services. That's um, the inbuilt tool to do all the conversions for you. This whole chapter here that I'm putting together is using the HTTP server for JSON web services using Yagile to decode those things. This is Scott Clements' rather marvelous port of uh, the open source Yagile tool. Um, so far, I've put up how to create an IBM I HTTP server from the command line and how to create one from the web administration tool. In fact, we click publish and that's going live right now. And uh, then an, a programming example of the code needed. And I'm going to add some extra ones. I'm going to do one using JSON from the IFS using Yagile, one using SQL. This course is just going to grow and grow. And I've got some other ex examples of uh, JSON and Yagile down there. There's lots of examples out there on the internet, but they're all pretty old. And it's about time we took them, converted them all to free format and made it a bit easier for you noobs. So here we are. Anyway, I'm waffling too much. Uh, this video is going to be talking about how to create an IBM I HTTP server using the IBM Web Administration for I uh, application on the web. This is IBM's new version of the UI, the user interface for this tool. And if you want to see it in real life on your machine, go to your system name, colon 2001, that's the port number, log onto your machine. I'm gonna log on with my very secret password. In fact, let me make this a bit bigger. Why don't I make this huge? Okay, this is the new IBM Navigator for I web screen. I gotta say, I'm not a fan I can see they've tried to get modern and UI-ish with it, but it's kind of, uh, well, it's a word that rhymes with fit. <laughs> it shows your system. If you've got multiple systems that you're managing, they'll all appear as a separate node on this screen. In my case, I've only got one. If you double click on that system, it blows the system out and shows you some interesting information about what's going on. You can tailor this, but that's not why we're here stroll down this menu on the left hand side down near the bottom as you hover over the bullets you'll see IBM web administration for I and this takes you to a different URL this is the IBM web administration for I screen let me zoom it in just a little bit see if it looks a bit better on the screen you can go here directly yourself which is how I tend to do it is put the system name in colon 2001 forward slash HTTP admin. I believe that's case specific, or at least it used to be. Hey, I can find out, can't I? HTTP admin. Oops, if I don't do any spelling mistakes. Yes, it is case specific. Why would you do that? Okay, so you put in uppercase HTTP, uppercase A, D, M, I, N. So you can either go to the main navigator screen, find it on the menu, or you can just jump straight here. Okay, this is where we see all of our servers. Go rummaging around in here. You'll see that you've got HTTP servers that are set up. HTTP are for generalized tasks with the internet and for the wonderful Yagile tool. There are application servers, which we're gonna go through in a whole other section, um, and installations. I've got no, oh, WebSphere application server. I don't use that or know anything about it, so I'm not gonna mutter about it. We are here to create an HTTP server. So let's create one called um, Bob, because I like it. So it's really this simple. I can look at all the servers that are running. Here's the servers that happen to be running on my machine right now. Here's the Yagile server. This is one of the examples that I was doing just a minute ago. Um, I'm gonna create a new one. You can see down here, you can start, stop, work with all the ones you're working on. Up here, create HTTP server. This is so easy, it's ridiculous. I spent more time talking about it than it would take to actually create it, watch. Bob, this is Bob's new server. 
I hope you, dear viewer, are actually called Bob because you'll be like, how do you know who I was? The server route, by default, all of the definitions for these web services live in the IFS off a folder off the root called www. That's where it's going to store the, comp the configuration file. That's where you'll find log files and all that kind of stuff. You could put it elsewhere, but just leave it where it is. Click next. It then asks you where you want to put your documentation for the web server. I've seen some places have documents in here or sort of wiki information. I just, again, just leave that as default, whether you're going to use it or not. Here's the interesting part. Do you want to qualify an IP address? Leave it to all IP, keep it simple, and give it a port number because each of your servers has to have its own port, otherwise they're fighting with each other, right? So uh, I know I've got a port running on 80. I know I've got a port running on 8081. I've got all kinds of different port numbers. Why don't I choose, why don't I do one on port um, 81? Why not? That's probably some reserved port number, but we'll find out. The next page just says, right, some information about the server itself. What's the job D, the job Q, and the, the routing data that it's going to be using? Uh, we're just going to say next. Do you want your server to use an access log? When you first set one up, I'd recommend you say yes. We can change it to no later. And if you are logging, we'll let it automatically de its, delete its own log seven days, 14 days, 13 days from now. And that's it. That was easy peasy, right? Let me click finish. Here is my Bob server. I'm in it, it's created it. Now, if you looked at the other lessons in this page, I could have done all of this through the command line interface, but what this has done is created the web server and created the IFS location and the folders and the configuration file. The really nice thing is I can even edit the configuration file from here. Look, here's the port number that I chose just a minute ago, right? There's the port. All the other information about this is very, very basic. This is where I would add details in here about the web server, uh, the web services that I'm going to be adding if I'm doing the Agile. But that, again, that will be in one of the lessons below this. And I could start that web server. I can't do anything with it yet because nothing's running on it. But there is the web server running happily on port 81. So if I wanted to access this machine, I'd put in my system name, colon 81, and put that into my web testing tool. That's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy.